difficult. Um, but yeah, let's let's dive in. Uh, so I think it's super important to go into kind of the process and understand exactly how you plan on doing a ton of outbound email hacks. Uh, emails, if done correctly, can get a response rate of up to 20% whenever I do what I call amplification, which is basically blasting a bunch of different publishers or people that were mentioned inside of an article. I'll often use the same process and the focus is first we target, we have to know who we're reaching, discovery, so making sure that we have the right emails, email validation, so we validate those emails so they don't end up bouncing or we don't end up getting our domain blacklisted. And then of course the outreach that's sequenced over the span of three different emails and is a little more personalized. So let's dive in. First stage is let's say that you're just doing outbound for sales and prospecting. There's a big difference between top down and bottom up. So like a top down approach would be we have to hit only decision makers, CEOs. And I think there's often a misconception as far as who actually does the buying decision. And often what will happen is CEOs are way too busy. Uh, CTOs, anybody with that kind of C-level chief something. Uh, what ends up happening is you have middle-level managers that have a little more free time that are looking to mix things up. They want to move. They want to shake. They want to create something new in the company because, hey, they're ambitious. So these are the people that I've often had the greatest effect targeting. Uh, and we can do this on LinkedIn. We can do this via using a number of different tools that I'll go into. But our goal is to build up lists for people that are in the exact same cohort so we can test like like things together. So this would be a screenshot of one of the outbound campaigns that I did when I was working with a company targeting folks for innovation. Uh, but it allows us to stay structured. So the next stage is discovery. So we need to find work emails. If you're operating in Europe, GDPR is the bane of your existence. It makes it pretty difficult to spam people. So we don't want to do that. So we want to find emails using names, titles, and of course the company name. Uh, my favorite as of, I don't know, like recent, I guess, would probably be Snowvio, but data jar is not bad. Contact out isn't in here, and a lot of people use that. There's extensions for this. Uh, honestly, I like doing Ninja Outreach and Buzzstream because it kind of couples like a few of these fun little tools all into one. You just kind of have to pick one that you like and one that kind of fits your price range. The next stage is, of course, we have to make sure that these emails aren't bouncing. And just because they're listed inside of a platform like Hunter, it doesn't mean it's actually a valid email. And I think a lot of people misunderstand that there's a lot of guesswork. So if somebody knows, OK, this person's email address is first initial last name at company domain, then everybody's email at that company will be that way. And that's actually not always the case. So I always want to make sure that I'm validating these so I don't get my original domain blacklisted, but I also use burner domains. And I can go into all that stuff later uh, or in a different video, but I, I figured for Jolt.io, this would be helpful for you guys. Then the next stage is I actually want to sequence the outreach. And this is somewhat, I don't know, new for some people. So like the concept is I don't always respond to the first time that somebody pings me, but if you bump them a few more times and you use a little bit of clever messaging, you'd be surprised how well that actually pans out. So I do a sequence of three emails. My tool of choice really jumps around a bit. Uh, I've used all of these different tools. I'm a little more impartial to Snowvio these days. I, I used to promote the hell out of Lemlist. It just really depends on what you want to do. Uh, but pick a tool that allows you to yeah break, it, uh, break these things out in a sequence, but also use merge fields for personalization and, of course, Good tracking. So when I'm actually trying to make sure that my goal is to get a meeting or to, to have something in the way of, hey, go here and do this action, I want to track everything. Uh, for those that aren't using uh, enterprise level tools like uh, Salesforce, Pipedrive is kind of my go to. It's not the most expensive. It's not the, the cheapest. Close.io is kind of a nice, cheaper version of that. And you're able to integrate your calendar with tools like Calendly to actually see when people are opening these things and engaging. And the last little bit that I'll talk about here is testing out different templates, uh, different merge fields. Uh, you can see at the very top right, there's go for coffee, Susie, Andrew, first name, you know, whoever is on your list. The cool part about doing this is using campaigns like that. And I've done it with 
me pointing at a wall uh, or a whiteboard and having what looks like handwritten, you know, like I love name of company. Uh, it's just a really clever way of actually engaging with people because they feel like the email was tailored to them. Um, one of the more frustrating things is when you get some of these emails that are, yeah, they're cute, but you know, like they're reused like crazy. So the one at the bottom there of the guy running from the hippo is, is one of the ones that I get probably once every month to three months, depending on, I don't know how much spam I check. Uh, and so the email goes as such, Hey, I haven't heard from you in a while. And maybe it's because one, you're not interested anymore and you want me to leave you alone. Two, uh, you, you're still open to it. You just haven't found the time and you want to schedule a meeting. Or three, you're being chased by a hippo and you want somebody to call for help. That is cute and kitschy and I, I like it. Uh, uh, it's just, I've gotten it so many times and it's like, come on, man, be a little more creative. So there's a lot more fun and interesting ways you can take a personalized approach. There's tons of really great blogs and templates out there, but it is what it is. And that's it. Uh, I think you guys just wanted me to do about three minutes, and I think that was a little over. But um, yeah, I can go into a bunch more, but I hope that kind of gives you an idea of what I'm capable of. And yeah, keep me in mind.